There it is. It says recording. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to stop right now, but then I'll know what to do it. Maybe I'll okay. stop. Start recording just so we can post this for any parents who weren't able to make the meeting. Um, so thanks for joining us tonight. Um, my name is Mrs. Dixon, Erin Dixon. I'm going into my 15th year here, here at Fortis. Uh, I taught in the building for 10 years, mostly as a middle school science teacher. Uh, and then I spent uh, four, almost four years as the 3-5 Dean, uh, which is kind of like an assistant principal here in our building. Uh, and now I am in my second year as principal. So I feel like I'm a good fit for Fortis in many ways, uh, but especially because of those multiple roles that I've fulfilled here in the building, uh, as well as my perspectives. I was a parent of Fortis students. I had two all the way through kindergarten through eighth grade, and I had one go kindergarten through fifth grade till we moved a little bit further away, and it would have been a really long commute for him. Uh, so I definitely can still wear that parent hat very easily uh, and look at things from a parent perspective. So I consider my job pretty simple, although busy, um, to obviously make sure everybody is safe, which has an added context this year with COVID and things like that, um, to hire the best people to be here in the building with me, whether we're talking about classroom teachers or support staff or office staff or the admin team, and also then just make sure everybody has the support and resources to do the best job that they can for our kids. So I have three people joining me today. Our K2 Dean, Stephanie Shackelford is here with me. Uh, we also have my 6-8 Dean, Brian Jensen, in case we had any specific middle school questions. And then our admissions representative, Rachel Cash, who is the one that you get all these wonderful invites from. So thank you guys for joining me. So just a little bit of quick background. Uh, Fortis is a tuition-free public charter school, which means you don't have to live in a district to attend Fortis. Uh, we follow state standards and we're accountable to the state of Michigan. We take the M-STEP test, for example, in the higher grades and we get state funding from the state of Michigan. Um, but we also try and go above and beyond what the state expects. We are also accountable to our charter holder, which is Bay Mills up in the Upper Peninsula. So we have up to about 740 students and we offer grades kindergarten through eighth grade. Uh, and we talk about nine character building monthly virtues, which we call our moral focus. For example, for the month of February, we focus on courage across all of the grade levels. And we've been here for over 15 years. So our school day for any grades have an engaging academic program. We have reading, math, science, social studies, and co-curriculars. So those are things like art and music. Our bre breakfast is served for all students. It's free for all students from 7.30 to 7.45. Um, students enter the classroom at about 7.45 and our day starts at eight. This is one of the areas where we have changed some things this year to be as COVID safe as possible. So this year we have students going directly to their classrooms from some different exterior doors right at 7.30 and eating in their classroom at 7.30. So we've put some pictures in here. These are a lot of pictures from the year before this year um, when we were kind of, everything was normal and kids didn't have to wear masks, which we do right now again to be COVID safe. So please understand that these were pre-COVID pictures and what we very much hope that next year looks a lot like. So after students enter the classroom, they'll start their day with a moral focus lesson uh, and then a read aloud. This would be the kindergarten schedule. A read aloud is when the teacher is reading a book, but stopping at some strategic points and asking the students questions, modeling what a good reader does, et cetera. The students then transition to ELA workshops. So our kindergarten program especially is very workshop based, which means the students are gonna move quickly from short, activities, some with the teacher, some independent work, um, because we know that kindergartners like to move around. Uh, they do have two recesses during the day. Lunch, again, free for all students, just like breakfast, but students are also welcome to bring their own food from home. They have writing specials, which would be those co-curriculars. We have art, gym, music, and technology. 
Um, and then we go into math for the afternoon number corners, kind of like calendar, if you've heard of that, where students will work on different skills as well as learning things like days of the week, how the calendar works. Um, and then we go into math stories, which is just what it sounds like. It's a story with math in it. And the students have a lot of, uh, they learn a lot of problem solving skills um, and how to solve problems differently, perhaps than the student right next to them, but also to work together to solve those. Um, then we finish up with math and math workshop and then science and social studies to end the day. So you can see it's a very full day, um, but there's also a lot of fun work in there too. A quick overview then, some of our other, other elementary grades, you'll notice a lot of similarities here. Um, all grades have that moral focus piece. The ELA block will contain a lot of the same things, but obviously as students get older, it'll get a little bit different, um, more independent work when necessary, things like that. Um, science, social studies, specials, lunch and recess, even for our middle schoolers, we think that they need fresh air too, just like the younger kids. So you'll see um, that they have that time in their schedule as well. So in K2, we work very hard on reading because we know that in kindergarten through second grade, kids need to learn to read. And in third grade, kids need to read to be able to continue their learning. Um, so we, the, in 2016, the Michigan legislature passed a law that requires schools to identify students who are struggling to be on grade level reading. And by third grade, if they're more than one grade level behind, they need to be retained. And that is for any school in Michigan. Uh, this was changed a little bit in last year because of the pandemic, but it's something we continue to take very seriously. Um, and we use a lot of tracking features to make sure our students are on track for that fluency. So they have a daily phonics lesson, a da that daily read aloud, guided reading groups, uh, some writing, and then we benchmark test their fluency three times per year. So that's when a student will read one-on-one -on -one and we track how many words they're able to read because fluency leads to comprehension and understanding what they're reading. So just some pictures to kind of show you again what that day in kindergarten looks like. Um, so in the first picture on the left, we have Ms. Cords, our kindergarten lead teacher, leading a read aloud that the students are listening to and they'll turn and talk to each other at certain points and things like that. Um, we have reading workshop where students were working on some rhyming words. Uh, here, students are using a Venn diagram to compare and contrast. And um, so, sorry, somebody just came in, so I'm going to admit them. And then students are receiving small group reading support uh, at their level throughout the day. Again, here's some pictures to kind of show you what that math time will look like. So you'll see Ms. Crutchfield, one of our wonderful assistant teachers in kindergarten, uh, leading a math lesson. Uh, and then we also have that math workshop where students will be grouped based on their different needs uh, and working with a teacher or doing some independent work there. Uh, we also, we like to disguise kindergarten math as learning games quite often. So these are some addition games that the kids really enjoy playing. There's a lot of manipulatives in math, math, so things that the kids can touch and count and move around and group different ways. For example, learning how to add three plus four, they can work on grouping those manipulatives to learn that. And then again, math workshops, so making shapes, which leads to geometry in the upper grades, learning addition, learning money, so all those different skills that the kids might be doing there. Oh, one more to admit. There. All right, welcome. To those of you just joining us, we're kind of working our way through a kindergarten day in the life, and I can definitely go back at the end if you have questions about those things. A little bit of science here, students working on figuring out if objects can sink or float, um, building some ramps to learn about force and different things like that. We do have a dress code here at Fortis, uh, so you can see that in the picture. So students need to wear the bright green or white collar shirt. Uh, the, white collar, the bright green shirts can be bought online on our website. Um, that's the way I went with my last one especially. Uh, he liked to... Uh, get dirty at school as boys often do. So I would buy the green shirts, um, but you can find the white shirts anywhere at various stores. Uh, also um, like Target, Walmart, Meyer, things like that. 
navy blue bottoms, um, solid color tights and socks, and then mostly black or brown shoes. And when our K2 students have gym, they can wear gym shoes all day because we know that that can be quite a hassle to have all those kindergartners changing shoes into shoes that need to be tied and so on and so forth. So we give that little bit of wiggle room in our dress code for our K2 students. So some skills to work on with your child if uh, they are getting ready for kindergarten. So these are great, obviously things that we'll continue working on with them, but if they come in with this list of things and being able to do these things, they really have a step ahead going into the year of kindergarten. So being able to identify numbers one through 10 and to count from one through 10. Identify means you hold up a picture of a number and they can tell you what number it is even out of order. Recognizing the letters in their name and the alphabet. So same way, kind of doing a flashcard thing, mixing them up, letting them recognize those different letters. Being able to write their name and some different letters and numbers. Enjoys being read to or listening to stories able to dress themselves, like put on their coat, fasten, snap, zip their pants and things like that, shares and plays with other kids, and then speaks in complete sentences, like five or six words. And that's not just because we're trying to be picky with grammar, um, but students have to, even in kindergarten, be able to um, tell us their needs or their wants, or if they need to ask to go to the bathroom and different things like that. So just learning to work on those kind of skills to advocate for themselves. Some other um, emotional and social readiness things. So obviously being able to follow directions given by the teacher. So that's a great thing to practice at home. Keeping hands, feet and body to themselves um, and behaving with care, which just means that we treat each other with respect and care. Um, for emotional needs, being able to calm down if they get upset about something, stating what they need and knowing how to ask for help, whether they're upset about something or if they need help with a task. And then socially forming those peer relationships, um, playing appropriately with others and working cooperatively with, uh, with others, like in the science lessons that you saw in those pictures previously. So we also managed to have a lot of fun in kindergarten. Um, so we take field trips uh, or we have some guest speakers. You can see some pictures of there. Um, we do a lot of celebrations like Thanksgiving feast and 50s day and career day. Um, today was actually the 100th day of school. So our kindergartners made some fun hats and did some fun activities with the number 100. And in fifth grade, it's thousandth day, which it's about the fifth graders thousands day of school. So our teachers had a lot of fun with that and the kids did some fun activities there as well. Um, we have a student of the month assembly. We love to recognize our students who are doing a great job. Uh, kinder camp is where we can hopefully offer you to come in um, in the late summer and have your students practice school for a couple half days, which is a great entry into seeing what school is like for them and knowing what they still need to practice a little bit. Um, and then some fun things like donuts with dudes and the ladies tea. And then some fun pictures of recess. Again, they have two recesses a day, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. So we love to get them outside and enjoy that fresh air. So real quick, just, uh, middle school. I know middle school might be a little bit ways away for you, but I just wanted to kind of let you paint a picture of the different opportunities that we have for our middle school students as well. So I'm not gonna read the whole list to you, but we do have a lot of great electives and different opportunities for our students, whether it's in music or athletics. Um, we have Falcon Club, which is a behavior reward system that we use. Um, we have uh, in our ELA classes in middle school, we use authentic texts. We use books to teach uh, the students instead of a big textbook, for example. So the students get very involved in the books they read. For example, our sixth graders this year connected with a book that they read so well that they created a fundraiser uh, for what turned out to be a true story that they found out at the end and raised over $1,500 to provide some fresh uh, water for a village in South Sudan. So. Uh, it really connects with the students uh, in a very authentic way that way. Um, in our middle school, for example, and this was actually for the whole building, but Fortis earned an A in our state accountability system. So this compares us to schools with similar demographics um, and, and also proximity in the area here in Ypsilanti. Um, and basically what all of that 
crazy looking data means is that we outperform what we're expected to do um, and that we take great pride in that and offering our kids here at Fortis uh, the best educational opportunity that we can. So um, as I always like to say as a parent, uh, if I had my own kids here, which I did, um, I would obviously have them at the best school that I could get them to in the area. And that's what I did. And so I would highly recommend it for any family. Here's a picture of our middle school Falcon Club. Um, so for example, last year, over 70% of our middle school students each month don't get a behavior refer referral, even just dress code violations. Um, and so we try and recognize them with something fun like a popsicle at lunch or some nachos or a free um, dress day or something like that. So we have a lot of fun with that and our students really enjoy it. And then finally is some of the different elective choices that we've offered. Um, and these do change from year to year, depending on what our teachers are offering. Um, but we've had everything from guitar to yoga to cooking with math, um, which sounds interesting. I wanna take that one. I'm not a good cook though. Um, art, team sports, et cetera. Um, and then we also have intervention for our kids. Uh, if the kids aren't performing where we want them to be, we use some of this time also to help those students with that. Um, and so I'll open it up to any questions that you may have. Um, if you uh, don't have audio, you can drop them in the chat as well. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so I can see the chat box or you're welcome in our small group here to unmute and uh, ask any questions that you have, anything that you're wondering about. I know it takes a minute sometimes to type or unmute, so I'll wait a little bit here. But any questions like arrival or dismissal questions or dress code, like I mentioned, anything about enrollment or paperwork that you need to return, um, anything that you're curious about. Yeah, hi, my mom has a question. Uh, where's like in, like in stores, where do we buy the like, uh, shirts and things like that? Yeah, so the lime green color shirts that you saw in that in a picture that I shared, um, those are on the website. So if you go to fortisacademy.org, you'll, you'll see a tab for dress code and you can order them right online if you want right there. And you can order the pants and stuff there too. So between you and me, the pants are a little pricier on the website than you can find in stores. So I would suggest ordering the bright green shirts from the website because they hold up a little better than white all year long. And then go to stores like Meijer or Walmart or Target, especially here in the Ypsilanti area because there's a lot of NHA schools. They will have a section or rack of those navy bottoms like pants and shorts and skirts and stuff like that. Oh, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Oh, and quick question, my mom's asking if I'm accepted into a Fortis too. So you to be accepted, so we still are in our open enrollment right now, which means you just need to go to the website and then hit the orange apply button and put in an application if you haven't done that yet. So um, if you've done that, then you've done everything you need to right now. Um, when we get to the end of February, then that open enrollment will close. And then depending on the numbers, either everybody will be accepted or if we have more applicants than spots, then we'll have what's called the lottery. And that is on March 9th. Um, and then after that, you would be informed if you got in or not. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Um, so I see Melissa put a process in there. Do you have a process during drop off for kids who have a separation issue and leaving parents? So we know that especially with our kindergartners, this can be really hard the first few days of school. Uh, so we try and be really sensitive to that. So Normally parents are able to walk their students um, to the door so then they can um, make sure the students are safely in the building, say goodbye, different things like that, um, especially with our kindergarten friends this year with the COVID safety that we were working on. On the first day of school, we kind of did a, a little bit of a delay start for our kindergartners. So we had our kindergartners arrive at nine o'clock which is after the arrival normal car line. And we allowed parents to kind of walk them around to some exterior doors that the kindergarten classrooms have. And, and then after that, the kids have really adjusted well. We haven't really had any big problems, but there's also um, at least five of us out there in the morning. Uh, if you drive by, you'll see us in our bright neon green vests and 
we're out there helping kids out of cars, checking for safety before we move cars. Um, and usually there's a, myself and somebody else that are kind of out there as flex people. So if a student needs a little extra walk to the door or a special greeting, then we can do that at that time. So um, it usually works pretty well. Of course. And Rachel, thank you. Uh, Rachel just shared the dress page if you wanted to see where to order those uniforms from. Well, um, my parents have another question uh, sure. for for the uh, for applying. I think I already did it, but do we like need any other like sort of papers or do we just do the form? So right now you just apply and then when you're accepted, like I said, either at the end of February or after the lottery, then you'll get what's called an acceptance packet. So it's a one of like a bigger envelope in the mail. It's white. Um, and you'll also get it via email if your parents put an email on there and that will have an explanation of the paperwork that we'll need. So there's a few more forms to fill out. We'll need a copy of your birth certificate and a copy of your immunizations uh, before you start. Oh, okay, thank you. You're welcome. What grade are you going into? Uh, eighth grade next year. Awesome. Do you have any questions about eighth grade for me? Mm, not really. Not right now. All right. Well, you're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Any other questions about we kind of have two extremes here. We have kindergarten and eighth grade, but happy to answer any other questions that either of you have. All right, well, that's kind of the end of our spiel today. So I am here um, at the school. If you do have any questions, you can call the main office anytime and they can put you through to me. Just let them know that you are a new family. You have a question for the principal. If I don't catch my phone, um, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, you can also um, connect with Rachel and she can give you my direct email address if that's an easier way for us to communicate as well. Um, and if you haven't had an opportunity to arrange a tour with Rachel yet, please make sure and do that. Um, we're, we're able to do tours right now on Wednesdays. So uh, come on in, see the building. Um, hopefully we'll have a chance to meet and we can again answer any questions that you have. And uh, we look forward to you joining us in the fall. Thanks so much for coming. Have a good night.